So this thing's cleaning up pretty good. I still got to get up and underneath the bottom of it and get all that grease out of, off of it. Now, when I test run this meal, it seemed to work okay. I didn't experience any trouble with this that I'm aware of, but I am gonna tear into it a bit. I'm gonna take off this 90 degree gearbox that's on the side here and re-grease it because it looks like it's just a grease filled box. I can change that. And I can also flush out uh, the uh, gearbox in here without disassembling this thing. Although I'd really like to just to see how it works and uh, see if there's any issue in there. But I can specifically remember my mother telling me not to go looking for trouble. So I've just about got this thing cleaned up. Really like the design of this thing. It's all self-contained. You've got the motor here, gearbox, bolts directly onto the bottom of the saddle of that machine. And I guess in theory, if you had issue with a gearbox on a machine like that on an assembly line, it would have been easy to change this versus your alternatives for some of your other machines where, you know, the gearbox is buried deep into the bowels of the uh, main casting. So this would be a quick part to change, kind of industrial Lego-ish. Uh, so transmits power directly up into the bottom of the saddle here, and then transfers that power 90 degrees through a spline shaft that runs directly into the front of the mill where all the handles are. There's an array of gears there where you can engage or disengage power feeds. So it's pretty neat, actually. And uh, looks like it's pretty heavy duty. So I'm gonna pull this off. We've got a loose bolt here, kind of concerns me. And I wanna make sure that this uh, transition here is uh, nice and lubricated. locating pins pushed in. Uh, somebody at one time may have had this off. So check that out. I'm glad I took that off. It is a broken dowel pin there. I'm thinking what probably happened is the bolt worked loose and it just torqued it and snapped that dowel off. We'll have to consider getting that out. But those are hardened, so we'll see. I mean, may be okay with it as is, but I'll think on that. So I've spotted my first issue in that there's no snap ring holding this gear on. It really should have a snap ring down there retaining this gear down on that shaft. Let's see if this will come off here. Okay. Yeah. Sealed bearing, rubber sealed, held in by a snap ring. Key. Okay. It's had some shearing going on. Eh, I don't know if it has or not. Something's went on with it though. Somebody's done some filing on it. It was probably a regular key and uh, somebody filed it to fit that because they didn't have uh, the proper key for it. That's what, that's what that is. So, somebody's been in here. Sorry, little guy, you can't, that metal's pretty slick. Don't get embarrassed. 
So this gearbox, I mean, I can't even turn it by hand. I don't know that I should be able to, but I'm suspecting that I got a bearing issue uh, in this 90 degree uh, transition. That's gonna be a pretty high load area. And uh, because it had the broken dowel, because the bolt was loose in it, because it was missing the, uh, you know, the snap ring, I wanna pull it down a little farther and have a look at it. Now I removed this plug in the back and I'm assuming that's just a clearance hole to press the shaft here out. So that's what I'm going to do. Hopefully we don't damage anything. Put a little heat on it as well. That way it persuades it to pop loose a little easier maybe. So now that I got the two gears separated from each other, I can turn the input and the output independently and feel the condition of the bearings. Before I couldn't do that. In fact, I couldn't turn this at all by hand. And I suspected that it either had a locked up bearing because somebody had been in this before. I wanted to check it and make sure that it either had a locked up bearing or maybe it was just supposed to be a really tight gear mesh and you know that's just the way it is. And that was the case. There's nothing wrong with this. The gear contact, contact pattern looks good on the teeth. And I'm gonna clean this out, press it back together, put some high molly grease in it, and it's good to go. I suspected it had issues, but I'm glad it doesn't. It's Bubba. Little Bubba Joe. He's grown up. Need a haircut, Bubba. So now it's time to push this thing back together, put the gears back in mesh. And while I'm pressing this thing together, I've got my hand on the back end of it trying to feel for the gear backlash. I want to press this thing together just enough to where the snap ring will hold the bearing in, or it'll go in its snap ring groove, and no more than that. I don't want to over uh, compress these gears together. So that's much nicer. This thing was just pressed together real hard. I think this bearing had been replaced in the past and they just pressed it till it stopped. I pressed it into the snap ring would go in its groove and that's it. And basically got almost no backlash and I can turn it freely by hand. So I think that's more like it should be.
So I'm all set up on the drill press here. Just some machinist jacks under this thing, leveled it up, centered over the broken dowel pin that I have in this case. I'm gonna try to remove it. We'll see if this works, and if it doesn't, it's not the end of the world. We can work around it. But the idea here is I'm gonna drill it oversized, if I can drill it at all, because it's gonna be pretty dang hard, I'm sure. Drill it slightly oversized, put some threads in it, screw a piece of thread rod into the dowel pin, and slide hammer it out. That's the hope. So we'll try it. If this drill will drill it, then we have a good chance of getting some threads in there. So we'll give it a shot anyway. Not very optimistic that it's going to work. surprising. So that is as far as I can go down with, this is a plug tap, so it's really pointed. Really, I need a bottoming tap because I didn't drill all the way through this dowel because it's hard on the outside and soft on the inside. At least that's the way it seems to be because I got almost through it and the drill just kind of started rubbing. So I'm not pushing my luck and breaking the drill off in there, so I stopped. So I'll just grind the end of this tap off because I don't have a... Uh, bottoming tap in 1032, so I'll just make one because I've got plenty plug taps in that size. So here I'm just grinding off the first few threads of this plug tap. Because it has such a steep taper on it, you don't get threads all the way, full threads all the way to the bottom of the hole. So by grinding off those first few threads, I'll get more threads in my shallow hole that I've drilled inside of that uh, broken dowel in a better chance of my slide hammer not pulling the threads out when I try to slide hammer this thing out.
right, I hope that'll be enough. We'll see. So just a piece of threaded rod with a hole down on it. I'm going to use that as a slide hammer to try to pull this out. Hopefully it, it works. So I really wasn't expecting to be able to drill into that dowel, but surprisingly soft on the inside, but really hard on the outside. I got almost through it with the drill, and it just started skating. So I just stopped, figured that was enough threads, and it was. So there we go. Worked like a charm. So I just used the cutter grinder for the first time in probably a year. <laughs> Had to knock down a quarter inch dowel pin to six mil. 250 thousandths is a quarter inch, obviously, and then six mil is 236 thousandths, so you, know, you knock off 14 thou. And uh, there you go, just a locating pin, and I hit it within probably three tenths. Close enough, right? Just for location. Better than no pen. Let's uh, go cut this and install it. I hope if you loosened it. So let's do a quick test fit. And that's the way it's supposed to fit. So now I can clean out these holes really good, lock tight it, and it shouldn't work loose. Should be good.
C-clamps just so it can't slide off the end if it decided to. So in last week's video, you may remember me briefly bragging about how, how well my dehumidifier had been working in the shop. And it had been up until I said how good it was working and then it immediately stopped working so good. The fan in it, the squirrel cage fan, started flying apart, throwing blades all over the shop. Here's two, There's several more on the desk. They were laying all over the place when I come out here in the morning. So don't brag on anything because then it's, soon to fail. Anyway, I bought a new unit. I haven't got it yet. A better one than this one, a more industrial uh, unit for reasons that we'll talk about later. Let me show you a quick job that we need to do. So on the workbench, I've got the mini lathe. I think it's probably the most appropriate tool that I have to make these little parts that I'm going to be making. And what we're going to be doing, I'll get you a little closer look, is making some parts for the iconic the Eagle 66 oiler, everybody likes them. A lot of people collect them. Really nice oil can, well made, all right? Got a good look to it. Buddy of mine, Ron White, who hooked me up with the gauge pins in the Kirshner box, collects these. He's got some that are incomplete and he needs a few parts. So let me show you what we're gonna do, the parts we're gonna make, and uh, we'll burn some out real quick. So there's our stock, just brass stock. Now I've already burned out a couple of these, so I know the order of operations that I'm gonna be using to make it. But there is a part that we're gonna make, minus this nut here, the spout and the tip. Now spout's relatively straightforward, although I did spend about 20 minutes, maybe 15, trying to figure out what threads were on this thing. I was looking for something complicated, but it is just a simple quarter 28. But there's the harder part to make because it's small, hard to hold, and a pretty small hole through through the part. 33 thousandths or 0 .8, 0 0.8 something millimeter. So we're gonna be using the mini lathe because we got pretty good feel through the tailstock of that thing. So let's get set up and we will start out making the tip. So we got our compound set up at about 13 degrees because that is the angle of that tip. We're just going to do it by hand.
So we got a nice sharp center drill on the tailstock of the lathe here, and I'm just gonna lightly spot the front of this oiler tip. That way, my little drill has a nice little spot right in the center to start. We'll drill partially through this, maybe, I don't know, halfway. We'll part it, we'll flip it, and then do the rest of the operations on the back side. This is just so I get good and centered in the end of that tip. So this is definitely the hardest part, not breaking that little drill off in this thing. Just keep backing out and clearing the chips out of this small drill. Wouldn't take much for it to lock up in there and break. Probably deep enough. It'll break through on the back side when we do that reverse operation. So now we gotta part it off. I really need to put a carriage lock on this. There's a lot of nice modifications you can do to these little lathes to make to make it easier to use them because they are a little tough to use. But you can make good parts on them. People do it all the time. It is tougher. If you can be a really good machinist on one of these, you'll be excellent on a nice lathe or a bigger lathe. I can't say that some of these aren't nice, but you get what I mean. So we're just squaring up the uh, tool to the work. Come in. So those of you who've watched the channel for some time may remember me putting tapered roller bearings in the spindle of this machine. And it does seem to have helped, especially with parting and stuff, although it's, you know, it still gets chatter through the rest of the machine. It is better than it was. So just turn our part over. Now work the back side. So we're going to center drill it, then we're going to drill it 
about 200 thousandths deep with this number three drill and then tap it with our quarter 28 bottoming tap. Get my drill marked with a sharpie so I know this is not like a super precise part. So we sharpie line on the drill is good enough. We're gonna stay a little shy of that sharpie line. get a good straight tap on this thing is to start it just by hand with a drill chuck. Turn the chuck by hand basically. Just face that off to clean up the back. You could just touch it to the grounder. And that's it. Tip is done. So now we're going to make the spout. And we'll just mark this. That's the long, we have a long threaded portion and a short threaded portion. And we're going to turn down the OD of this tubing just a little so our die starts easier on it because it is slightly large. the tip there a little bit so the die starts easier. So a little bit of wheel. Got the jaws backed all the way out on the chuck because we're going to use that to press on our quarter 28 die. Turn it by hand hopefully to get it started. Started. I'm going to move this stuff out of the way. And run it up to 
to the little bitty shoulder I got there and this end will be threaded. Okay, threaded. So there we go. Now all I need to do is cut it to length and do the exact same operation on the other side and that's it. All right, we'll clean all the burrs up and be ready for, for use. thread. So there's the original and a couple that I made. Another spout there. These won't fit in until they get a little patina and some dings and scratches on them. But there you go. Look good. A little part replication there for the Eagle 66. So my mother and chances your mother were right. If you go looking for problems, you're going to find them. And we did on the do-all gear box. <laughs> I'm glad that I looked at it because those problems weren't going to go away and chances are they would have just gotten worse as time goes on. Probably would have ended up with some stripped gears and who knows what else. But now that that dowel pin's replaced, it's all cleaned up and new lube and seated proper. I shouldn't have any more problems with it. So also glad to get those parts done for my buddy Ron on the Eagle 66 oiler. So now he can take those parts, put those on his incomplete oil cans, and set them on his display shelf to look at. If you're going to collect something, you might as well collect something cool, and those are. So I think that's it for this week anyway. Got some really exciting stuff to share with you next week, so look forward to that. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks to anybody who supported me on this project. It's much appreciated. Couldn't do it without you. So that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. The birds fly south as the light leaves your eyes. Hold on to your dream. Oh, I know you want to scream. Since the day you're born, you're just a flower. Hoping to break through the storm